Today I've got a nice advanced calculus result regarding an infinite sum and an infinite product. And we're going to prove this result. And then afterwards, we're going to look at a couple of counterexamples for this result where we ease the restriction on the hypothesis. Okay, so let's see what we have. So we'd like to suppose for all n bigger than or equal to zero, so non-negative integers, we have a sub n is bigger than zero. So in other words, we have a sequence of positive real numbers. Then the result that we'll prove is that the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of a sub n converges. If and only if the product as n goes from zero to infinity of one plus a sub n converges. And in order to prove this main result, we'll use something called the limit comparison test, which is something you would generally learn in a second semester calculus class. So it says the following. So if we consider two series, a sub n and b sub n, where they're both series of positive terms, and the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n over a sub n exists, so it's equal to L, and it's positive, so it's on the interval zero to infinity, so it's not an infinite limit, then the series a sub n converges if and only if the series b sub n converges. So in other words, these two series have the same convergence properties. Okay, so let's prove this first. And then after we prove this result right here, we're going to, like I said, look at a couple of counterexamples where we ease this hypothesis on the positivity of those terms. Okay, so we'll start with the forward direction. So in other words, let's suppose that the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of a sub n converges. Now by something that's generally called the test for divergence, that tells us that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals zero. So if you recall, the convergence of this series implies the following limit, but this limit does not imply the convergence of that series. A classic counterexample of that would be the harmonic series. Okay, so now let's consider something like this right-hand side. But we'll recall that a product converges if and only if the natural log of this product converges. So that motivates us to consider the following new series. And that would be the sum of bn, which is the sum of the natural log of one plus an. Great. And just to like get at what we're using here, we're going to use the following fact that this sum bn converges if and only if the product of 1 plus an also converges. And that's actually an equivalent definition to the convergence of an infinite product, the behavior of the corresponding infinite sum after having taken the natural log. Okay, now what we'd like to do is apply the limit comparison test to this series b sub n with this series a sub n. So let's do that. So let's look at the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n over a sub n. So that's going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log of 1 plus a sub n over a sub n. But notice that those a sub n's are both going towards zero, and that's because our original series converged. So given that, we can take our limit here and write it as the limit as x goes to zero of the natural log of one plus x over x. And I guess I should say this is the limit as x goes to zero from above because we have positive numbers in our sequence. Okay. But if we look carefully at this, we'll see that this is an indeterminate form of type 0 over 0. That's because as x goes to 0, obviously the denominator is going to 0, and then the numerator is approaching the natural log of 1, which is 0. So that motivates us to use L'Hopital's rule, which means we can take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator and we will achieve the same limit. So that's gonna give us the limit as x goes to zero from above of one over one plus x. But that limit is equal to one. So what do we have? 
We suppose that our series converged, and then we defined a new series based off of the natural log of our product, and we showed that that new series converged. And then we took the limit of these terms, but this limit existing in being finite means that this sum bn also converges but then by the defining property of the convergence of an infinite product, that tells us that, the convert, that our infinite product also converges. So that means we're done with this forward direction. Now let's look at the reverse direction. So starting the reverse direction, we'll suppose that our infinite product converges. So the product as n goes from zero to infinity of one plus a sub n converges. But that means that the corresponding infinite sum, the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of the natural log of one plus a n also converges. And like I said before, that's by an equivalent definition to the convergence of this infinite product. Okay, so that's cool. But that tells us that the limit as n approaches infinity of the natural log of one plus a n equals zero. Because if a series converges, then its terms must go to zero. But the natural log is a one-to-one -one function. So that means that the inside of this should be approaching whatever it takes to make the natural log equal to zero. But the natural log is zero only when the input is equal to one. So that tells us that the limit as n goes to infinity of this input must be equal to one, which is the same thing as the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals zero. Okay, but then we can calculate the same thing that we had done on the previous board, which is the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n over a sub n, which were maybe I'll write b sub n as natural log of 1 plus a sub n. And recall that we got that that was equal to 1 on the previous chalkboard. But the fact that this is 1 means that the series right here, the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of natural log of 1 plus a n, and the series, which is just the sum of the a n terms, have the same behavior. That means that our sum right here also converges. And that finishes the proof of this reverse direction. Okay. So, like I promised, now what we'll do is revisit this result where we weaken this condition right here and get some counterexamples to really show that this condition right here is necessary. So first we'll look at a counterexample when the series converges but that associated product does not converge. So that must mean that we've got a series made up of not just positive real numbers, and I'd like to point out that this counterexample comes from the following math.stackexchange post. Although I saw this counterexample a couple of different places, but this is maybe the place where it was written up the nicest. Okay, so let's define the following sequence, a sub n, and we'll define it as follows. So it'll be equal to i minus i, i over the square root of two, minus i over the square root of two, all the way up to i over the square root of n minus i over the square root of n, and so on and so forth. So notice that it's alternating, and we kind of repeat denominators. Now let's look at the series first. So the sum as n goes to from 0 to infinity of a sub n, well, that's very clearly going to be i times the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n times something. But let's notice that this something is a decreasing sequence. Maybe not strictly, but like loosely decreasing. So that means that this converges by the alternating series test. So I'll just put AST, alternating series test, tells that this thing converges. Okay, so we've got our setup. We have a convergent series. Now we wanna show that the corresponding product does not converge. 
So let's look. The product as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 plus a sub n. So that's going to be the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the partial product, which I'll write out as terms. So we've got 1 plus i times 1 minus i. We've got 1 plus i over root 2 times 1 minus i over root 2. And then a little bit of a trick here is where to stop this. We're going to stop this at 1 minus i over the square root of 2n. And then we'll have 1 plus i over the square root of 2n. Great. So here we're using the fact that we can equivalently define the convergence of a product as the convergence of the partial product or the convergence of the natural log object that we saw previously. Okay, but now this is set up quite nicely to combine terms. So notice these first two terms combine to 1 minus i squared, which is the number 2. These second two terms combine to 1 minus i squared over 2, but that's going to be 1 plus 1 over 2, or 3 over 2. And then what's nice is the next terms combine to 4 over 3, all the way up to these last terms, which combine to 2n plus 1 over 2n. And that's, of course, by pushing together those two rational expressions that we get, 1 plus something. Okay, so let's write this out a little bit. So we've got the limit as n goes to infinity of 2. I'm going to write that as 2 over 1 times 3 over 2 times 4 over 3. You can check the next one will be equal to, let's see, 5 over 4. And then, like I said, that ends at 2n plus 1 over 2n. But now we've got this nice telescoping action. So this 2 will cancel this 2. This 3 will cancel this 3. This 4 will cancel this 4. The 5 will cancel the thing that's coming next. And then this 2n gets canceled by something that's just previous it. So notice everything gets canceled except for this 1 in the denominator trivially, and then this 2n plus 1 in the numerator. But if we let n go to infinity, that is clearly going to trend off to infinity, which means our product diverges. So we've got this nice example where the sum converges, but the product doesn't. Now we're going to look at the opposite type of example. Now we're going to look at our opposite example. That is where the product converges, but the sum doesn't. And this comes from another math.stackexchange post, so you can find the number right here. And this is like pretty interesting in that what we do is essentially construct a well-known sum that converges and pull it back to a product. And we'll see that as we look at this a little bit more carefully. So we're going to define the terms a sub n to be e to the minus 1 to the n over the square root of n minus 1. And I should point out here that this is defined for n bigger than or equal to 1. So we're cutting off that zeroth term, but that should be a problem. Okay, so now let's notice that this product of 1 plus a sub n converges if and only if the sum of the natural log of 1 plus a sub n also converges by what we talked about previously. But that's going to be the same thing as the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n over the square root of n. After the natural log cancels the exponent, and of course like the plus 1 and the minus 1 already cancel each other out. Okay, but we know that this thing converges by the alternating series test. So this series converging means this product converges. And now let's look at the sum of the terms instead of the product of the terms. So let's maybe put now, if we do the sum, as n goes from 1 to infinity of e to the minus 1 to the n over the square root of n minus 1. So what we'll do is it expanded out with four terms, and that'll give us an inequality in the correct direction. So this is going to be bigger than or equal to the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity, and then we'll have a bunch of stuff minus 1. So let's see. The zeroth term of this exponential equation will just be, or this exponential expansion will be 1. The first term will be plus minus 1 to the n over root n. 
the second term will be this exponent squared over two factorial. So that's gonna be one over two to the n. Notice the minus sign cancels. And then the third term will be this exponent cubed over three factorial. So that'll end up being minus one to the n over six n to the three halves. And then the next term will most definitely be positive, but since we're cutting that next term off by some rules about alternating series test, we know that we produce something which is smaller. So just to reiterate, our sum in question is bigger than or equal to one, this one that we've ended with. Okay. But now let's notice that this one and this one will cancel and we're left with the sum as n goes from one to infinity of minus one to the n over the square root of n plus one over two to two n and plus minus one to the n over six n to the three halves. Great. But now we know that this term that I'm underlining in red converges by the alternating series test. This term that I'm underlining in red also converges by the alternating series test. But this sum that I'm, conver that I'm underlining in green diverges because it's like a harmonic series. And furthermore, it diverges infinitely because it's all positive terms. So since this is made up of two convergent series and one divergent series, we know that this must be a divergent series. Furthermore, it must diverge infinitely. Okay, but since our original series is bigger than or equal to what we showed to diverge infinitely, that means our series also diverges infinitely, which is exactly what we wanted to end up with with this counterexample. Now, if you've liked this video, consider subscribing to the channel. And I've also done some other videos on the channel with this kind of advanced calculus or beginning real analysis flavor. There should be one on the screen now if you're interested. And that's a good place to stop.